Hello and welcome to another exciting and uh, hot and steamy episode of the Left and Red podcast. Yeah, man, this I, sucks. <laughs> yeah. It's actually uh, pouring outside. It just started pouring outside. Oh, it's going to be soon, yeah. I've been getting, like, uh, uh, like weather warnings, like, all day. And oh. it's starting to get, like, insanely windy down here, but uh, it's still, like, kind of sunny out. But, uh, yeah, I am... Um, uh, Back to the business at hand. I am your co-host Evan, joined as always by my co-host Cameron. Cameron, other than it pouring and being hot and humid out, what's going on, dude? Um, nothing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I yesterday and the day before were very busy days, and I was bouncing mm-hmm. around a lot. So today, all I've done is uh, I I finished my book. I finished Master and Margarita this morning. Yep. Um, Pevier and Volohansky. What version the Pevier and Volohansky? Version. Yeah, and so I actually figure we could just chat about that for a minute because we we've both been discussing how those guys are like the goats of Russian translation. Well, uh, well, uh, husband and wife. But yeah, yeah, those those I just meant guys in like the pejorative. Oh yeah, 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 it's yeah. Larissa Vol- Larissa Volokonsky and something Pevier. He's from here. And Robert Pevier, literally from here. He's I, from Boston. I think it's Robert Pevier. He's I'm from Boston mistaken. and she's from Ukraine. I think. Yeah, but um. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah the, so the they, they've Russian done some really good translations, and I just, I read um, part of their translation of Dead Souls by Nikolai Gogol, um, yeah. but I don't know that I'm a huge Gogol fan. The translation was good, and by all accounts, that's the translation of that book to read yeah. for the modern English-speaking reader, but um, I don't yeah. know, but, I, but Master and Margarita uh, by Mikhail Bulgakov was yeah. one of the best books I've ever read. It was nice. so funny and weird, and the whole thing played out like a... Like some sort of like demented like Looney Tunes cartoon in a lot mm-hmm. of parts. Like there are these three minions of Satan that kind of do all the st- like. So for those of you who don't know, I mean you should read the book. But the premise it's it's written in the 1930s um, in, in the Soviet Union, um, and there was never really a full consensus. And I'm sure some uh, smarmy leftists will tell you one way or the other um, that there is certainly a consensus, but. You know, I think there's never been a true consensus over whether it's like a full on criticism of living in the Soviet Union or just certain aspects of it or what. But either way, it's pretty silly and, and a pretty fun read. And um, it, it, the premise is that Satan shows up in Moscow in, in the 30s, like sort of right at the start of like Stalin's true like seizure of power. And um, obviously, the Soviet Union was, was aiming to become a, 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 a an atheist state. Um, and so the premise is that there are some intellectuals arguing over the existence of Satan and yeah. or the existence of God. Um, and Satan shows up and is like super tickled pink by that conversation. He's like, Ooh, no God, that is hilarious. <laughs> and, yeah. um, then just for like a week basically takes hold of the city and just starts doing like the dumbest shit. But most of it is done through these three guys that follow him around who like now, like I really just can't stop thinking about, um, one is a demon Azazello, and then there's this anthropomorphic cat named Behemoth, who who really is just like Bugs Bunny, and uh, mm-hmm. and then there's this uh, super tall, like goofy illusionist guy named Koroviev, and the mm-hmm. three of them just do the weirdest shit for <laughs> you know about 250 pages before either the master or Margarita show up in the book. And uh, I, I have to say, if, if those of you in the audience have not read the book, you really should. It's, it's fucking hysterical. I have not, like, laughed out loud at a book in, in a while. Um, yep. <clears throat> and it was very good. And I think a lot of that is owed to the translation. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I have that Russian friend, and he was the one who um, years ago turned me on to Bevier and uh, Volkonsky. And, uh, yeah, he, I mean, he usually reads his Russian lit in russian i believe but sometimes he reads it in english and he says if it's english it should be those two doing the yeah translation. that's i think what people said because a lot of those those russian writers particularly from mm. like the second half of the 19th century and the and up through i mean up through probably now but um at least the first half of the 20th century mm. are really funny you know a lot of the the famous russian writers um like Gogol, like uh, Bulgakov, like Dostoevsky, have this really interesting, demented sense of humor. And mm-hmm. I think a lot of the early English translators of their works um, yeah. went for a purely academic translation. Well, I yeah, think- I mean, the, that Constance Garnett version of Brotherhood's K that I read, and I think is also one that you read, is dry like a Victorian fucking novel. Yeah. It's uh, a... <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, Which is uh, not at all the actual original flavor of, of the yeah. text. So actually, 
I think it's sitting on my porch right now, hopefully not getting rained on. Yeah. Um, I have a copy being delivered of, of their translation of Brothers K because yeah. I haven't read that since college. But, um, yeah, it, it, they really capture the sort of demented humor of it. Um, and, and really, I mean, like, some of the funniest vignettes I've ever seen. Yeah. And I, I don't want to spoil anything because you guys should, should absolutely yeah. read the book. But just, just, like, weird and really, like, Looney Tunes-ish. But then under, underpinning all of that, um, like I said, some pretty, some pretty sharp... Uh, little critiques of you know life in 1930s soviet union under stalin and um and also some really like on point uh uh religious philosophy which Mm -hmm. is which is cool um i obviously both of us like that so yeah um just just neat man interspersed Mm -hmm. with all these really well-written chapters just detailing like the the final day of christ and pontius Pilate, which is like tied in in the the best way ever at the very end of the novel and it's like oh just just chef's kiss yeah. 10 out of 10 excellent excellent book all right well anyway uh after that why don't we uh start the show then yeah great So first things first, can check. What do you got? I have a, uh, a 32 ounce Nalgene uh, filled with okay. water, tap. Nice. Uh, that is rapidly uh, exceeding room temperature towards uh, what I like to think of as uh, as foot temperature. The hot uh, zone. Approximately the temperature of your foot uncovered in a, a sweltering room. No. You gotta get yourself. Um, I got like uh, what's the company? I think RTIC. It's made out of that same stuff like Yeti, but it's like half the price got like a 40 ounce bottle of that dude you gotta get yourself one of those so what's cool about this is i can just you can just fit ice cubes in it and uh, i drink it fast enough that i don't need it to stay cold that long um i just yeah no ice cubes yeah no mine can also fit ice cubes in it but it's like 40 ounces and if i put that in there with like ice and go to bed when i wake up in the morning i still have ice cold water right next to me does the does does the ice stay ice yeah no it'll stay ice yeah that's insane that's so cool (laughs) yeah i mean i mean I, I've literally, of- I've literally had. Uh, if the water was already cold and I put ice in it, twenty four hours later I've gone back to it and there's still been ice in it. That's insane. Yeah, that's really cool. I have a, um, I have a Yeti thermos here that yeah. I got for free. Oh, this one's actually not Yeti. The Yeti one's in my car. This one is a Swig thermos. I mean, it's probably I made out of the same material. Yeah, it's so. the same thing. But I also have a Yeti one, and I get them for free sometimes from like companies yeah. that do events at my work and. Uh, but it's like, hey, you want this? You poor fuck. Here's a little yeah. piece of dog shit. And I, I, I have, I actually have two Yeti coffee mugs. One for my previous job. One for my current job. Both branded by those places. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, so. Swig was actually this product isn't specifically branded because the mm-hmm. company that did the event was like selling this product. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But the Yeti one is like some no. pharma company or something. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I'm drinking a uh, one of the uh, like three actually good Lacroix flavors. This one's the Limoncello. Mm. I got at Aldi. You know what's funny? I don't like real Limoncello. But your dad used to, your dad makes it, right? Uh, he made it a couple. He's uh, he talked about making it again this year. But yeah, he, I remember. Um, I remember when like we first met, he had made some. That shit and was we drank strong. That. It would, dude. Yeah, we got fucked up off of just like a bottle of that. That shit yeah. was fucking rough. Yeah, and um, it tasted it tasted okay. I mean, it's just there's something about that that level of sweetness that mm-hmm. like gives me a hangover. I mean, I don't drink anything now, but like, yeah, uh, yeah, no, I know maybe it's mean. back to that because he made that with grain alcohol, and so when it was yeah. finally diluted, yeah, he's probably and he putting thirteen dollars a like, bottle of fucking Everclear or something in the 
There were that yeah, there were many bottles of Everclear because I had to go buy it yeah. for him because back then you yeah. couldn't get it in mass, and so that was when we were living in New Bedford. He had me drive yeah. down to Rhode Island, and I yeah. got him like ten bottles of Everclear, which is a yeah. wild thing to walk into a store and ask for. Yeah. Um. And yeah, I bought it for him, and after he bottled it off, my guess is that stuff was coming in at like like. Um, Dude, ten bottles of Everclear. It was probably fucking like illegal for you to even drive that because it's. That's like a lot of flammable liquid in yeah. your car. Fucking got a placard your car for that. Well, I shit. also that same story. So the <laughs> the limoncello debacle. I you know my dad is is legally blind, right? So I did a lot yeah. of running around for him for that, and I had to go to the store and get him a case of lemons also. So I went yeah. into the store that I used to work at when I was like a young kid, and um, what was that a stop and shop Shaw's? It was a Shaw's, Star and I, I got him, um, I got him a case of lemons. And I came back, and he was, like, baffled at the price. He was, like, so upset that he, like, made me take him back there with the lemons. And I was, you know, 20, 21 years old. He made me take him back there with the lemons and then be like, my my stupid son didn't think to ask that since we were buying, you know, 150 lemons, can we have them at cost instead of, like, the individual price of the lemons? Yeah. Since we're buying a case of lemons, can we can we have it for the price of a case of lemons? Or, like, a little more. And they were like, yeah, well, yeah, we can do that. And he was like, cool, great, thanks. And, and you're so, just like, how should I? How yeah, I was like, I what the fuck, man? That? Like, I've ever bought a, a case of lemons. Yeah. I don't know. Like, Dude, that, it's funny. I have but a, he was so disappointed in me that I didn't think to ask, hey, since I'm buying so many, can I have them cheaper? Yeah. Which, sure, now. Dude, that makes it, sense it's so funny, too, because it's totally it different because, like, I was a kid. But, like, and a similar type of dad story. So, you know that place Crystal Ice in New Bedford? Yeah, 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 yeah. That they sell the ice for, like, fishing boats? Yeah. So, uh, when I was a kid, I was probably 10 years old, my my uh, my family, my dad, he, like, hosted, like, this big, like, Memorial Day kegger at our house, and he got, like, two kegs, and he decides, it, and, like, a similar thing, he's like, I'm not gonna go buy, like, 10 bags of ice at the cost of that. He literally calls Crystal Ice... Just to get, like, enough ice for, like, a personal two-keg keg party. And, like, I go there with him. And it must have been, like, just enough cheaper that that made sense. But we go there, and we have to, like, pull up to the loading dock in his, like, Subaru Outback. <laughs> and he just gets, like, like, just, like, a bunch of ice. But it was so fucking fun. Like, just, like, pulling up to the place that you get, like, industrial levels of ice for fishing boats. Just to get, you know, basically the equivalent of, like, ten bags of ice. Yeah. Probably just because it was like five dollars cheaper to right. get it like wholesale from them. <laughs> oh, <that's so> funny. <laughs> I still remember that shit, dude. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like so. You know, I'm, what does an individual lemon cost? Probably this is you know, t- t- twelve years ago or something. So like I'm sure cents, it was. I don't know, a dollar. Yeah, Maybe probably a dollar, a, a yeah. dollar a pop. And so here, you know, he's season. It's like a hundred fifty bucks, and he's like, "What yeah. the fuck, man." <laughs> Yeah. What? What? So what? What? What was it like? What the deal was? It like seventy five? Was it like a hundred? Yeah, I don't remember, man. It doesn't matter. That's not the like important part bucks. of the story. The savings aren't the yeah. important part of the story. <laughs> the important part of the story is my dad's like uncontained disappointment with me. Yeah, and just his like inability to accept. The like, it's not unreasonable that I didn't think to ask that. You know. No. Yeah. I would now, though, and that's yeah. how parents teach you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they belittle you for being 20 years old and not knowing it without having ever been taught. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, but literally, yeah. I mean, I did go in, and they gave me just the whole big, shit, like, taped-up box of lemons. Yeah, he was like, cool, I was about to unload this. So I don't want to do that shit. Yeah. You know. I was like, fuck it. Yeah, cool. <laughs> we can have these. I was like, great. Yep. Thanks. Yep. See ya. <laughs> but, um, anyway. Yeah, anyway, yeah, so, uh, you know. I guess uh, this is going to be another one of those, uh, you know, we just talk about whatever episodes. I'm sure you fine listeners have uh, figured that out by now. Um, but, you know, we got a few topics. One is um, fucking, uh, you know, Ronald DeSantis is, um, things aren't going great for the DeSantis campaign, folks. Yeah. Uh, so he has just laid off like a third of his staff. Isn't that awesome? Which generally speak, dude, like think of dude, it's like, not a good sign. No, okay, so, like, dude, generally speaking, once you start laying off staff, you don't kind of, like, have such a rebound that you start hiring again. Yeah. And uh, perhaps he maybe should have hired some different staff to begin with, because one of the people that he had to fire uh, was, like, this, like, young, I guess, up-and-coming, like, Republican staffer who has had, like, uh, he's, like, 
um, done stuff with like Nick Fuentes, I believe, who uh, runs what, what's his fucking stupid ass show, America, America Now or America First or whatever. America like, First, yeah, America First, and he's uh like pretty open like Nazi, like I mean he just straight up drops like n bombs and talks about like how the Holocaust isn't real, but if it yeah. was, it would have been good. Yeah, um, not a not a good dude. <laughs> yeah, he's terrible, and um, and uh, so this fucking staffer surreptitiously made a video. One of these terrible Ron DeSantis, like, way too online videos that ended with Ron DeSantis marching <laughs> in front of um, a Sonnen rod, which is a not the Nazi black sun symbol mm-hmm. with, like, soldiers on the side of him. And um, he's and uh, this uh, this staffer who surreptitiously made that then posted it to a page. I think he ran called DeSantis fan cams and then retweeted it from his official uh, campaign staff account, and, um, well, he quickly deleted it, but it had been seen, uh, you know, DeSantis, an official DeSantis video with, like, uh, Nazi imagery, so he's, he's fired, uh, (laughs) as well as a bunch of other, uh, staffers, and, uh, just to get an understanding of how early in the season is, you remember when Bernie Sanders had a heart attack leading up to 2020 election, you remember that? Uh, yeah. That was in October of 2019. Wow. This was like, this was when like uh, Elizabeth Warren started coming down and her yeah. campaign crashed and burned, and that was in like fall of 2019. It is fucking July. Yeah. And this dude's campaign has already basically crashed and burned. And then speaking of that. Yeah. He had a car accident. Yeah, I know, and unfortunately, he's speaking fine. of crashing and burning. Yeah. I know, and that was, like, the whole meme around that was that he was just fine, but it was just, like, yeah. you read about the news of the car accident, and then it's, like, your yeah. immediate disappointment to read the phrase, like, everyone is okay. Yeah. And, you know, hey, uh, officially, you know, Evan and I are going to go on the record saying we, we're we glad. We're glad that he's not uh, dead. I'm, I'm going to not go on the record and say that. We're glad that, we're really glad that, uh, that nobody got hurt. All right, so I'm going to play a video for you that just that just came through the pipeline now of Ron DeSantis. I'm just going to put it through the speaker, but you can plumb it in if you want for the actual episode. If it doesn't sound good. All right, so this is him talking to a child, and this is the shit that he says. Oh, what is that? Can I see? Yeah, that's probably a lot of sugar, huh? Good to see you. All right, 4-H, Wayne County. Fucking... <laughs> What, so what is just what is that an ice aid? Probably a lot of no, sugar, huh? Yeah, he she, she said he's like, "What do you got there?" And she's like, "An icy." And he goes, "An icy? It's probably a lot of sugar." <laughs> like, dude, like, fucking black hole of charisma. This guy sucks so bad. Oh God. Yeah, he couldn't even just be like, "What flavor?" You know, like just has yeah. no. Mm, that's t- that sounds yummy. Like yeah. it's a fucking like a little kid, dude. Yeah. You think they even know what sugar is? You fucking yeah. idiot. Like it sounds like the girl's like four years old. Dude. Ridiculous. <laughs> Help 
Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah, yep. he's 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 such he's so I think this is a good segue into another current topic that I'm sure everybody today is losing their minds over. And we've kind of touched on our thoughts on this before. But um, speaking of space aliens who aren't no. fucking from here, uh, um, no. yeah, the uh, I guess they're calling him a, a, a whistle, a whistleblower. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what's his name here? Oh, I have I've refused uh, to even watch retired major videos. David Grush. Grush. Right? Yeah, who who claims to have been um, tasked uh, by some shadowy figure uh, the, in the, the U.S. cigarette government. smoking man, right? <laughs> into uh, investigating what what the military refers to as UAPs, what the rest of us know as U- UFOs, um, unidentified aerial phenomenon or unidentified yeah. flying object, um, aliens, right? Um, what what wow. most of us associate with aliens. Um, not actually technically necessarily aliens, but I think that's the part that grabs attention yeah. the most vociferously is uh, uh, the idea that piloting these crafts is not some sort of Russian secret agent, but uh, a little green man yep. thing from Alpha Centauri. A gray, um, yeah. <laughs> a little gray. Right, or a gray. Yeah. The greens and the grays are at war, actually, according to a, one of the major theories oh, here. Really? Yeah, the greens are small and malicious, and the grays are tall and benevolent. So mm. keep that in mind, listener, as you uh, discern which of your two co-hosts here is the better of the two. Uh, now, mm. I want you to... Short guy's bad, tall guy's good. But I like the grays. Yeah, I, I mean, a green would look up to the grays. And covet the what benevolent they have. ones. The benevolent ones. The grays are the tall ones. Yeah, you said tall and benevolent. Those are the ones yeah. I like. Yeah, you like them, but you could. You, you're not one. I'm it's human, it's yeah. fine for a green to like a gray. I am not. I'm not an alien. I'm a human. I'm just saying, if you're if you're drawing a comparison between us, it's apt. Because the short. I just want it on the record that I am a human being. That's a very human thing to say. Yeah. I want to make sure it's I just want some so sort of everybody's clear. I want some sort of certificate that clearly see, states, for the record, that I digits. am legally and yeah. biologically for all intents. A bivalve and heart. <laughs> I've got a liver right here. And all the course, human my, features. My pancreas, my second pancreas, spleen, all in the right your place. splurn, your <laughs> splarn. I've got you all remember, three. Do you remember the episode of uh, Invader Zim? Where I, Zim no, thinks I don't. that... Do you not? You never watched that show? I did, but when I was like eleven, man. Oh my god! Well, I, yeah, I don't remember all of them, but this one always stuck with me. So, Zim, Zim, finds out the about invader. organs, and and decides that what makes humans human is their organs. And so, in an effort to become the most human human, he starts stealing organs from like all the other kids at school and just swallowing them oh, to god. the point where he's like hugely obese and you can just see like intestines hanging out of his mouth okay he's got like six hearts in him like eight livers and uh that's just you know to blend in he's like look at all the juicy organs i have sorry i turned off my background can you look at what sancho's doing right now like he's like pissed at me he's just showing me his back yeah and like his ears are sideways he's like wow you didn't even pet me when i came over is that like a cat's? Uh, anger? He's like shunning me right now. Is that like they're? Or is that real? He seems mad. Generally Does he? speaking, when their when their ears go sideways, they're kind of pissed. Maybe it's just hot. He likes the heat. Hmm. Yeah, he likes well, the heat. Not me. Um, yeah, really like the AC fans. He can deal with, but like when it's like wicked hot, he'll just like lay in the sun. He's like, yeah. he's like a weird hmm. jungle cat. <laughs> um, well, anyway, I just to tie it back up, I wanted to just sort of yeah. briefly mention the the that <clears throat> the congressional committee is now hearing from uh, retired Major Grush, um, yeah. who is claiming that he was hired to or or, or ordered to compile uh, all noteworthy examples of you know government UAP findings and projects over the mm-hmm. years, and that there were multiple areas. Basically, today in the hearing, he he did say in the little clip that I saw that there were uh, non-human organic uh, components to some of the 
um, crashed craft. Whatever that means. I mean, I, I don't think either of us is going to make the case that there, there, there aren't aliens out there. I mean, there yeah. probably uh, so, are. So, yeah, I want to say, I would <laughs> say that there's probably pretty much a 100% certainty of some sort of alien life elsewhere in the universe. Yeah. The universe is big as fuck. It's so big. And, um, and also the idea that alien life would, would be, you know, like us in any way, but also like, you know, even reminiscent of like the stuff we've dreamed up on I mean, Star yeah, it Trek could be, or whatever. There, there could be like nitrogen based life forms. Sure. You know, instead yeah. of carbon or something like that. Yeah. Or, or life forms that, you know, don't have, uh, don't exist in a physical way in, in the manner that we're used to. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like just things that are so far beyond our understanding that like, I don't know, it's, it's yeah. odd to think that they'd come here. But also, I think it's odd to think... Sorry, I meant, I meant silicon, not carbon, but yeah, anyway. <clears throat> yeah, it's odd to think that they'd all end up here, you know? If I was an alien, this is actually, like, the last place I would land. Because, you know, they're mo- if you're trying to be secretive and study humanity, why would you land in, like, the place where you're most likely to be found out, like, in the West, you know? Wouldn't you want to no. land and, like, study, like, some slightly less technologically advanced you know village somewhere and and where you could actually just interact and like yeah. do your thing and probably not get found out i don't know it's yeah no i mean i i would say there's probably about a hundred percent chance that they exist somewhere else in the universe some sort of life form yeah. i would say there's about zero percent chance that they've ever come here um yeah it would be it would be it'd be really I mean, interesting yeah i mean first of all i mean you would basically they would either have to have a lifespan that's so long it's incomprehensible or have figured out faster than life travel, um, and uh, I. But I mean, like you know, there, we've like seen like what like, not really like amino acids, but some of the things that like seem like they could be precursors to life, literally just on Mars. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I mean, like, if it's right there on Mars, then there's a pretty good chance that you know a hundred million light years away, <laughs> in that whole span, uh, expanse of space, that there would be something. Uh, as well, but I mean, it's also like, uh, even if, even assuming that aliens could travel this far, I highly doubt that they would, um, unlock the car doors as they drove by our neighborhood, so to speak, you know what I mean? Right, right. <laughs> they would probably be like, uh, d- do you don't want to go that fucking backwater. <laughs> this place looks a little sketchy. I yeah. Don't go there. They're still, they're still worried about nukes down there yeah they've got about a hundred years to uh self-annihilation or figuring it out right we'll wait a hundred we'll, we'll wait that hundred yeah but uh yeah no i mean uh, so i fuck if i know what the hell uh all of this uh stupid alien psyop shit is i don't know i just assume it's some way to funnel more money towards uh uh the military uh, industrial complex, but who knows? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. It, it would be it would be something, but again, I think that I think that yeah, like yeah, aliens aliens traveled hundreds and thousands of light years and spaceships far beyond our comprehension to come here, and then got shot down by an F thirty five that if there's a slight gust of wind, it crashes right <laughs> on takeoff. Like, come on, like you know what I mean? Yeah, it's unlikely. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that it's also, you know, we've talked before about, like, the limited hangout thing. And, like... Yeah. I mean, this is definitely a limb hang. Yeah. They're, they're, they're throwing <laughs> something out there. They're not being explicit. They're not saying, oh, it's aliens. They're here. Because if, if something like that were to actually happen, there'd be no way to contain it. You know? Like, yeah. It, it wouldn't it, be the U.S. government telling us. It would be a, a shuttle fucking appearing over Montana or something. Right. Exactly. And or there's just no way they could keep Siberia a little or something. And so whatever they have, whatever whatever test vehicles or whatever they've got evidence of, they're just yeah. giving us enough to keep us distracted from something else. Yeah, throw some fucking slop into the pig trough for these yeah. oinking hogs. Yeah, let the little fuckers have something. And now look yeah. at us, two fucking white guys with nothing better to do talking about it on our show. They've won. I say it like that. They're, they've won. Excuse me, I'm Portuguese. They've yeah. succeeded. Speaking of which, Festa next week, Billy. Ooh. I know, yeah. Uh, what day are you going? I'm going Friday, and uh, I'm not going to say their name because it's over air, but I haven't told you this yet. Um, but him and I hung out a few weeks ago, and he's going to come down to visit for this. Our friend who used to like to show his penis when he got drunk. Who's that? What? I don't remember who that is. When did they do that? 
Remember, it was me, you, him at uh, at my mom's house like ten years ago. We were getting drunk, yeah. and he was like, "Yo, Cam, I'm just gonna show you my dick," and you're like, "Do it." And so he just like shows you his dick, and then like you went through a period where every time we went to a party, he would do that. All right, just oh. you know who I'm talking about, right? Oh, anyway, I'm uh, excited because he's gonna come out. Yeah, uh, I will not be able to go with you on Friday, but uh, so that'll be fine. And I hope you have a nice time. Thank you. Yeah, going to the Portuguese feast. Yeah. Yep, I'll be there Friday. Not going to go Thursday because I have work at 6 a.m. the next day, and so I'm just not even going to. I could go on Thursday, but I won't be going without you. So that'll just be fine. Mm-hmm. I the first, It's one of those things. I like doing it, but, like, I, it would never be a plan that I made on my own. You know what I mean? It's something that I like doing with you. That Caserla, dude, the Caserla was so good last year. I know. It's also kind of cursed for me. Last time we were supposed to go, my car broke down on the highway like on the way there and, oh yeah you uh, didn't even come last year no because my car died i had to buy a new car oh my god that, like, dude, that, that was day. Th- that was the first post-covid fest that that it was, was the one best of the worst Cicerla, weekends yeah. i've ever had actually like just in terms of like pure stress like i won't say worst ever because it wasn't like some big life tragedy but like yeah. in terms of like just normal stressful days that are a, a handful and everything that could go wrong does go wrong it was it was a trying time you know, and then to top it all off, I told you about it, and because you know, in the past, I've been a, a, an unreliable fellow. Your immediate reaction was just like, "All right, well, you know, whatever." It's, it's typical Cam, and I'm like, "This is the worst day of my life. Why are you being a jerk?" And well, like, I didn't. I oh, didn't no, say man. it was just typical Cam. Well, I, I just, I was just like, "Are you sure your car is like dying right now, man?" Yeah, you didn't believe me. Yeah, I, well, yeah, I thought you were, I thought you were maybe overreacting to something. Yeah, or, which is, which is whatever. That's fine. But there, there's no, been, it, there's, there's, there's precedent for this type of thing. So there, there is, there is. So there is, but was, not everyone would have reacted that way, regardless of the precedent. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there is yeah. also precedent for you. Specifically, being you. me. <laughs> the precedent exists for. Yeah. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> We've got an interesting dynamic, folks. That's yeah. why we have a show. Cam, Cam went through a period where uh, he would uh, flake, I think, like 80% of the time when we were going to hang out, like, the day yeah. of. But I also did, like, 100% of the travel to ever make our... A lot of, yeah, yeah, work, most so. of it. You did most of it, yeah. Yeah. The, uh, so, you know what I mean? Like, there there are two sides to it. It doesn't matter. Yeah. We don't have to get into it now. But, um, <laughs> anyway, uh, aliens probably haven't been here. And this is all probably bullshit. And if you're freaking, it is it is interesting. Somebody was pointing out to me earlier today, like it's interesting how like all the same people who you know during the the COVID thing, uh, which yeah. is obviously so you know what I mean when I say during the COVID thing, um, the the initial COVID outbreak and, and vaccination, the calls for vaccination, et cetera, et cetera. Everybody was like, you can't just trust anything the government tells you. You can't, whatever. And those same weirdos, those same, like, asshole sunning freaks yeah. are all now just like, see, I've been telling you, it's aliens. Just because the government was like, aliens, Everybody's maybe. just shitting and pissing their pants all the yeah, time now. It's, it's, if, it, <laughs> if it's not one, it's another one. I shit and piss my pants sometimes. You shit and piss your pants sometimes. Everybody in this country just shitting and pissing their pants at some other time. Yeah. One I've time never shit another. my pants, but I've certainly pissed my pants. <laughs>
I think you've... Have you told that story on the podcast? I don't know. You don't need to. You don't I don't care. To. I'm not embarrassed about it, but... Uh, you don't have to. Yeah, I. you know, at a certain point, I don't know if I want to be... I don't want to no be... Has the I don't cut. know if I want to be this week's Goose of the Week. Uh, yeah. This week's... Yeah. Today's Goose of the Week, yeah. yeah. No, today's Goose of the Week is Ron DeSantis. It's Ronald. Yeah, Ron DeSantis is a good a good candidate. Oh, uh, Elon Musk is another good candidate. Can oh, dude, finally, yeah, okay, yes. That, he that's finally did thing the up. X thing. <laughs> dude, okay, so... Like, dude, fucking... He also um just reinstated the account of this QAnon influencer. I, I'm not even going to get into the details of the story because it is, like, the worst shit you'll ever hear. But this guy posted, uh, who is a QAnon uh you know, anti you know child uh, abuse advocate who was suspended. Well, let's hold the- on. Let's back up and and before we continue, because every person who's a normal person should be an anti child abuse advocate. It's the easiest position in the world to take. Yes, it's the easiest position in the world to take. And if but you're wh- not an anti child abuse advocate, well, no. Be it, 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 so. I was going. What I was going to say next makes it clear why I said that. Mm. So we're going to give a content warning for this part that we're about to talk about because it's yeah. going to get into some. Uh, like a uh, brutal, or not, we're not really going to get into the Yeah, let's not get too much in detail because I don't like that. Yeah, we're either. not going to, but we are going to talk about uh, a, a child abuse instance. And like, yeah, pretty, pretty bad. He is a QAnon anti child abuse advocate who posted actual child abuse material from this very famous case about an Australian man. Yeah. In the Philippines, which I'm sure some people know what I mean when mm-hmm. I just say that. Yeah, I, I don't remember um, his name, but, but I know he about. posted literal pictures and clips from a child snuff video. Snuff. And like snu- yeah, the guy kid? yeah, the guy killed the kid in the video. Ugh. The famous video, one of the children he kills them in the video. So uh the guy was talking about this case and then posted actual content from the snuff video. Mm-hmm. And he was suspended under the previous administration. And Elon Musk just unsuspended him because he's a big right wing influencer with like a million followers or something, or like hundreds of thousands, but his posts get like millions and tens of millions of views. And uh, even Elon cites the fucking case uh, or the thing that happened that got him suspended. And people are going to do banking on the same app. Yeah. They're going to do banking on the app where apparently you can post child abuse material. Yeah. And not and get your account reinstated. Yeah. So like Elon has finally like uh he's come back, you know, with the stupid X bullshit. Um, which everybody on earth associates X with porn. Yeah. Elon apparently uh thinks that people will see X and think, oh, like a treasure map x marks the spot no x marks the hole hole as in fucking as in it's porn like that's what everybody thinks that's when what i think ex- about when i think about my exes just a bunch of holes yeah <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, i'm just kidding just... i'm the most disappointing fucking lover and boyfriend of all time sorry if any of you listen to this i can't imagine any of you do but you were all better than me no i no, some of them were worse. But <laughs> some yeah. of them sucked ass, bro. Some of them were pretty fucking rough. There was a couple <laughs> shitty ones, yeah. yeah. It's, I've gotten like one for one. No, actually, no, there were like two bad ones in a row. The last one was a nice person, though. I like her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Still, there's still nothing bad to say about her. Yeah. But yeah, so anyway, Elon's <laughs> uh, apparently uh, by chain- getting rid of Twitter and tweet and retweet terms that everybody knows what they mean. Only like 10% of the population uses Twitter, I think, but like everybody knows what tweet and retweet means. Yeah. Um, what is it going to be called now? An X and a re X and re X. Although I've also seen that he may, because I guess at that point everything in the website was going to be an X. I'm going to post an X on X and you can re X my X. But I got to X out of the X that I wrote because I don't want to X it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, I think he's going to call them jeets now like x e e t zeets or exeets <laughs> it's like dude, so bad <laughs> but uh <laughs> this is so but apparently uh so he's already lost like 20 billion in valuation of the company since he bought it and there's been it looks like he might lose and like getting rid of the twitter brand may re- 
drop another $20 billion in value, which means that this thing that he bought for $44 billion, once the name change goes through, may only be worth about $4 billion. <laughs> like, dude, he is so fucking stupid. This man, like, I really love it because, like, obviously I'm not the only one who's saying this, but I've been saying for years that Elon is just a stupid asshole. Yeah. And it is really great seeing it laid bare to the point that, like, if you're not, if you haven't realized it yet, you just, yeah, I mean, you're just, it's just sunk cost fallacy. You just refuse to admit it at this right. point. Or, or you have to accept the fact that, like, because you've said also before, and I like the way that you put this, that he's he's a, he's a dumb guy's idea of a smart guy. Yeah. And if you feel like he's a smart guy... <laughs> Folks, you may be dumb. <laughs> you might be dumb. Like, it might you just You might that... be dumb. And and here's the thing. No one can deny that he's he's achieved a degree of financial success. Yeah, he's successful. That's, yeah, that's... I mean, he's, he's I, I don't even want to say impressive, because that denotes that it's something no. positive he's kind of like, gotten lucky a few times by like the dot-com like boom sure you know? and and but here's I'm, the thing man you don't you don't have to be smart to be rich yeah that that's i mean so this is what i was about to say too i feel like also all this shit with elon has really laid bare how much um uh like you know people will always talk about like the richest people are the hardest working and the smartest I don't think so, man. I mean, I don't doubt that Elon works hard. I don't think it's towards any good goals, or I don't think it's no, efficient. I'm sure he spends a lot of time on whatever. The I fuck don't he's think he doing. works efficiently. I think he works hard towards stupid things. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, and a lot of people have a lot of faith in him because it's like the era of the Marvel movie, and everybody just yeah. wants him to be like this, like Bruce Wayne or this fucking uh, what's his name, uh, Iron Man, Tony, Tony Stark, Stark yeah. type dude. And I remember people used to compare him to Tony Stark, you know, yeah, and like, which know. is insane. But, like, you know what would be sick? It would actually be sick if, if he built a working Iron Man suit and became the first superhero. And then it blew up. Not Iron even. If, if our first superhero just was, like, the if dumbest If our first guy. superhero is the dumbest, most pig-headed, like, yeah. right-wing contrarian moron... I mean, I feel like there's room there for, like, whoever makes the boys or whatever to have their yeah. Iron Man ripoff character and have it yeah. just based on Elon Musk. Just like, instead of being pants. some genius, just, like, yeah. some really rich asshole who's like, oh, I could afford to have them make me this sick suit. And, like, yeah. I don't know, I just mostly use it to try to get hand jobs, you know. That's and like, then buy the hand job givers off with horses. With horses. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> it has a built-in horse launcher so that yeah. I can uh, I can just get... shoot a, a mare or a steed at them, whatever yeah, they want. Dude. I'll shoot a mare at them, and they'll no. make me shoot my... A gelding. Load. I can I can shoot a gelding at them. <laughs> set, no balls. Set phasers to gelding. Yeah, um, so set phasers speaking to of, geld, so, boys. Uh, I, I saw a, pu a bunch of puppies today, and that was cool. Yeah. Um, well, my coworker's dog had 11. It's up to 11. Had 11 fucking puppies. Popping those fucking things out. Right? So she had... They thought she was done at 6. She took, like, a 45-minute break, popped two more out, and they are like, wow, 8. Like, crazy. And then three hours later, fucking shit dude, out this three is like more a puppies, dude. cannon at a fucking basketball game or yeah, something. Yeah, dude. She shit out three more puppies. And you know what's insane? So every individual puppy has its own placenta. Obviously, a human baby, usually there's only one baby. But if there are twins, there's two placentas. If they're identical twins, there might... I don't even remember how that works. But no. uh, the, the mother dog eats the placenta of each puppy after it's born. So this this fucking bitch, this poor in bitch the literal is sense, just fucking fucking is scarfing <laughs> like, on eleven whole placentas, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Eating good today, yeah. That, um, I really but here's the thing: they all live cow. too, because you know sometimes puppies don't make it; like they, yeah. they get crushed or whatever during birth, and things uh. happen. Eleven living puppies, and I think a dog only has twelve nipples. How many nipples does a dog have? Is it twelve? Twelve. Oh. I'm not gonna go count. No, My I mean, uh, yeah, you have a dog to count on, but I'm gonna. Yeah. How many nipples does dog a have. dog have? They tend to have between eight and ten, but some have more. Interesting that it's not a uniform number. I'm fascinated. Yeah, it's pretty by uniform that. for people. Yeah, I've only got three. <laughs> I actually, they're have each the size of a normal human's too. I actually used to have uh, like a little skin tag that my doctor always said was a third nipple, and I let somebody cut it off with nail clippers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, dude. They were like, "I bet you won't let me do this," and I was like, "No, nah, okay, that's fine." And then no. they did it. 
fuck. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey, man, look, like, you make fun of my two existing nipples bad enough as it is. Imagine they if should I had be three. made fun of. The, I don't these need are that. very strange growths. They're not strange. They're just kind of puffy, dude. I'm just not, Okay, kind of puffy. Dude, they're fucking massive and puffy. They're marshmallows. They're puffy, they're puffy dude. They're yeah. like melted marshmallows. No, I, look, I'm not arguing with you. They're puffy. They are. I've never pretended that that's not the case. I've got some physical oddities about me. Yeah. You know, sure I've do. got puffy nipples, and I have way more chest hair on the left than on the right. Yeah, you have a giant hairy nevis. Yeah, I don't know that it actually is that. That's what one nurse practitioner told me, but the hair yeah. has started to come in more on the other side as yeah. I get older, so I don't fucking know. Yeah, nothing will beat the nevis of the... I used to have that friend, the one who went crazy, tried to kill Yeah, him. I had another friend he, who... Yeah, we used to call thing. it the Chewbacca patch. I mean, yeah. this shit was like... It was like head hair. Well, it was, yeah, it was dark. dark. Yeah, yeah. Mine's it not... It was dark really and like full. Like, I mean, like, full. Like, yours isn't full. Like, yours no. is like... Normal chest hair consistency. Yeah, basically, yeah. Kind of, yeah. Uh, no, this was just like... This was as thick as the hair on his head. It was really weird looking. Hated yeah, that. Yeah, that's thing. what a true Nevis is. That's why I don't <laughs> think I have one of those. But yeah, yeah, yours yours look totally different. What are you gonna do? Yeah, um, right. I just have odd body hair and puffy nipples, everyone. So if you're out there in the audience and until now you've thought to yourself, "Wow, that sounds like a guy that I would like to see naked," I want to just really hammer home to you that it is not what it's cracked up to be. Yeah. It's not as as good as you might be imagining. <laughs> Yeah, so I've, I want to read an article now. Hold on, let me just find it. It's, uh, it's in here somewhere. All right, so um, 
this is uh, I want I want to read an article for everybody here. Uh, I've been sitting on this one for a while. I keep I keep meaning to read it, but um, it uh, yeah, I keep forgetting to on these episodes. All right, so this is uh, this is from April sixteenth, in the New York Post. Uh, this is by Steve Quatzo. Let's be blunt. Legal weed is turning New York workers into zombies. And it's, no, I just want to say, like, if I were ever to move to New York, I would absolutely subscribe to the post. I love the post. It is so fucking insane. Every It is such an insane reactionary rag, and I can't help but find, like, every article hysterical. It's just, like, the way everything is framed, and it's, like, such a fucking little piss baby cry. Just, like, just constantly crying about someone. Right. This one is about how the serve pigs that work at Starbucks are too stoned to make your coffee quick enough. <laughs> so, the Big Apple is now the Big Blunt. Not just because decriminalized marijuana led to proliferating mayhem in the five boroughs, mm -hmm. which uh, that, that line itself is a link to a different New York Post article about the disastrous rollout of legal weed is costing money and lives, which is from a week earlier. Uh, anyway... Not just because stinky smoke hangs everywhere, seeping into subway cars and even Broadway theaters. The acrid odor I detected in the crowded men's room with the majestic theater a few weeks ago was not from the Phantom of the Opera smoke machine. It's also because of a forbidden to utter truth. In an age where raising the minimum wage ever higher has become mantra, which still doesn't get raised, uh... Namely, a license to get high has turned service employees into zombies. I've lived in the city nearly all my life. I never had to repeat my highly complex Starbucks order, a tall coffee, three times to get a response from the bummed out barista the way I do now. Uh, which also has a link to, I believe, another New York Post article. Uh, complaining about how to order Starbucks coffees, which is just so fucking good. Um, Bob Dylan's lyric, Everybody Must Get Stoned, is now apparently in the employee's handbook at most every place requiring customer interaction. <laughs> My friend Shelly Clark, a restaurant consultant, observed, Too often, any question or request is met with a vacant look and the very much by rote, No problem. Uh, sounds fine. All right. Also, I'm I'm going to send you in the chat now a picture that now appears in the article right after this. Okay. Okay. So, um, just look up the article and look for the uh, the picture of um, uh, for our listeners at home, pull over on the highway, or just look at your phone. It's fine. Um, and look at the picture of the Statue of Liberty smoking weed. Oh, I can see it. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Look at that fucking picture. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> Alright, so. Steve Quozo. Look at this yeah. guy. Yeah, I know. He looks like a Steve Quozo. He looks like a guy who would complain about this. Um, Alright, so. That's actually nice compared to the hostile glares I get for interrupting stay out of my space reveries. It's time to lower the minimum wage. <laughs> dude, hell yeah. Why not, when many workers in stores, restaurants, dry cleaners, you name it, have turned hopelessly stunad, as the Italian people say. The, words, the word means dumb, but sounds eerily similar to so many service employees' doped-up conditions. They're stoned up the wazoo, hollow-eyed, disengaged from their tasks, their breath reeking of weed. This guy's so fun. Dude, did Grubhub bring you General Sal's chicken when you ordered chicken burritos? Blame the delivery guy's favorite hangouts, e.g. the smoke and draft shop across from my building on 1st Avenue at East 75th Street where a sidewalk knife fight recently sent two of them to the hospital. I gave a guy at pre uh, pre I don't know how to pronounce that. pre yeah. Uh, pre a $20 bill for an $8 cup of soup. I asked for a bag. He took the $20 and promptly forgot the soup, my change, the bag, and me. He wandered off, inexplicably waving my Andrew Jackson like a flag, until I appealed to his colleagues. 
That's yeah, a true. Sure. I guarantee you that's a real I'm just story. I guarantee you that story really happened. That's true. Yeah. That is. That just sounds true. Yep. Can uh, you imagine, I, dude? Can you imagine? I got a 20, you man. You go and get, and the guy is so high that he just looks at it and starts waving it around and walking around like, like an a fucking flag. Oh my god, dude. that would be hysterical. Yeah. I wouldn't even be mad. That'd be fucking awesome. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen so much pot-induced lethargy since my Vietnam-era college days, when so many fellow students were high that their panicked weed flushing during a rumored police raid overwhelmed the campus pipes. Interesting. Now, I think we should zoom in on this, because this is something that a guy writing for this conservative paper would probably be mad about. He said his Vietnam-era college days. So he's a, he's a, he's a, he, he's a draft dodger, probably. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Maybe. You know, I mean, if he was of age during the Vietnam War, why didn't he go serve? Oh, uh, sorry. I only had 20 over 100 vision. I couldn't do it. <laughs> um, now our whole pot-pickled city is that campus. Pot-pickled. And then it's just showing pictures of smoke shops. Um, at Upper East Side Gourmet Food Emporium, Agada and Valentina, one cashier was, quote, so out of it, staring into space while people waited in line... A bank executive who's a regular customer there told me she forgot to give me my change. She closed the register. I had to wait for someone to come with the dreaded key. With the dreaded key. With the dreaded key. After 10 minutes for a 30 second transaction, she didn't even apologize. She's so high that she's just staring at the register and somebody has to come bring the dreaded key to open it. Responding to a tweet... Okay, this is where it really gets good. Now he's complaining about about tweets, dude. Responding to a tweet I posted about discombobulated workers, a follower wrote to say that the woman running the service desk at a major Sunset Park auto dealer was clearly high, had no idea what was going on, lost my car twice during routine service. Real estate man Jordan Cohn tweeted, I just had a restaurant server lose my credit card. Yep gone never to be seen again my best guess is that it went into the trash by accident our quote-unquote progressive polls are throwing our city into the trash and it's no accident i'm reading his tweets kind of like half-assed while you Dude. uh or his his sheets or sheets uh tweets. from three days ago he says this is this is hysterical i have fancy looking scissors that can't cut anything not even paper, says China. Maybe we shouldn't worry about their navy so much. <laughs> Dude, I love it. Like, what a fucking unhinged article. Oh my god, it's so good. <laughs> The dreaded key. Like, Dude, just sitting there, just like, I'm just imagining this banker looking with just bead, beads of sweat rolling down his face as he stares at this person come with, with the dreaded key. The subways the are an insane music. asylum on wheels. We must get the crazies off the trains. And then there's a picture of a person with no shoes on, on the train. The crazies. And, oh, they and what he actually wheels. says in the article is... We must get the mentally ill off the trains. Dude. Oh Watch the opening doors. Prepare to, prepare to enter a rolling lunatic asylum when you get into a subway car. Dude. The progressive crowd will howl at me for telling the truth about the subways, the supposed lifeblood of the city. The NP... Whatever, it doesn't matter. This is hysterical. His, his articles are so good. Dude, yeah, he's insane. I'm I now a that. Steve Quozo fan. Yeah. Yeah, dude. It, uh, oh, my God. Yeah, actually, I'm gonna follow him. I should follow him. Yeah, he's he's clearly awesome. Yeah, I guess I'll follow him too. Yeah, yeah, I love that article, dude. It's so fucking funny. It's so good. Ugh. Well, yeah, look at this. Look at this loser. Yeah, clamoring, followed by clamoring, followed by me too. Yeah. Um. Well, I gotta be honest with you, dude. I'm feeling pretty physically uncomfortable. Uh, okay. What else would you like to do? I it's, got mine. Man, it's so fucking hot. Yeah, it's actually going to be kind of cool next week, which is nice. Yeah, tonight actually, I can feel a, br a breeze coming past my. AC oh, it's going to be like a hundred tomorrow, though. Yeah, a yeah, hundred on Saturday. It's so cool how like every day is just ninety plus degrees now up here. Yeah, it's not cool. Yeah. It's it's really it's really cool. It sucks ass. 
It's literally not cool. It's hot. It's literally hot. It's quite literally very warm. <laughs> All right, uh, I think that's probably it for me. I had a couple other things flagged, but none of them are really worth bringing up yeah. now after we just did that. That was good and fun and exciting. Oppenheimer, good. Mission Oppenheimer Impossible. was good. Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning Part 1 was good. Um, Barbie was awesome. Yeah. I loved Barbie. I thought I'll it was seeing a, it on Sunday. I thought it was a better film than Oppenheimer. Not just I had more fun at it. I thought it was a better movie. I, I will say I do like a, like a lot of people. I mean, just like Twitter uh, morons. I've been talking about, like, oh, yeah, film bros must be so mad that uh, Barbie's the biggest movie in the country or in the world. And it's like, yeah, one thing film bros hate is Greta Gerwig. Yeah. <laughs> like the they darling don't. of, like, the film world. Yeah, just, like, yeah, an indie film darling yeah. that, like, ab film bros absolutely love. Yeah. Yeah. Right? No, dude, and, and every, like, film filmy person that I know is, like, so stoked. Either has yeah, seen it Barbie, and loved yeah. it, or is, like, so stoked to oh, see it. Oh, I'm, I'm going with uh, Patrick and uh, our, my, uh, our Russian friend. Yeah. The three of us are just going to go, yeah, three for Barbie, please. Yeah, all three yeah. of us love movies, and we're, like, super excited to go see it. I went with my friend Elena the other day, and it was, mm -hmm. uh, it was fantastic. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was so much fun. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really excited for it. Um, <sighs> but, yeah. Yeah, Oppenheimer was really cool. I was probably Nolan's best, honestly. Fun. Yeah, it was good. It was, um, and I actually saw I saw that that we gave it the same review on Letterboxd, which I half. was. I guess I shouldn't be surprised by, but because um, we had pretty similar mm -hmm. feelings, I think afterwards. But yeah, um, yeah, we good. went to see that together, and that was, um, you know, what I was I was pleasantly surprised. I thought it was it was really a really it good. It was movie. surprisingly um, critical. What do you say? It was surprisingly critical. It was, and that was the my my biggest concern no. going in, you know. And um, I think we both really <clears throat> loved um, what's his face as Gary Oldman. Of, uh, yeah, Gar Gary. Oh Oldman's yeah, I portrayal think uh, of I, Truman. I think I explained that. Uh, I think it was on Twitter. I said it's like, it, like Gary Oldman's portrayal of Truman was like stepping on this gigantic bloated beetle and looking at it smushed into the soul, into like the grooves and the soles of your shoe. Yeah. Just like just disgusting and vile, but you can't really look away. Yeah, he was awesome. Don't don't let that cry baby back in here. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, when he just hands him the tissue. Yeah, <laughs> so good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's obviously very well acted. I don't think anybody was worried about that yeah. part of it. I'm mean, Killian Murphy was great. Honestly, all the but I'll tell you what shot... though, Ryan Gosling better give him a fucking run for his money. I mean, Gosling. Well, will Gosling's going to be supporting. Uh, supporting. Yeah. Um, so but, it's going to be between him and Robert Downey Jr. Because Robert Downey Jr. was so good in Oppenheimer. He was, but dude, man, Ken better fucking win it. Yeah, Gosling. Oh, I, was think, I think Gosling awesome. wins. I think Go I think Gosling will just because of like all of the buzz about. I mean, like basically everybody says that he like steals that movie. Yeah, yeah. Well, so here's the thing: Margot Robbie is also. We've talked about this in the show. Fantastic actress. Yeah, she's um, great, and huh. really was like the best choice to play Barbie because a she's stunningly beautiful. Um, and they actually poke fun at that in the movie, right? Like, she's having a scene where she says something like, I don't feel beautiful anymore. And mm -hmm. the, the, it pauses and the narrator is like, note to the filmmakers, Margot Robbie is an odd choice to make this point. And it's just, like, true. Like, she is stunningly beautiful, but also, like, a fabulous actress. And, like, but her role in that movie is sort of to prop up those around her. Um, and those of you who have seen it will kind of know what I mean. Like, even though she's the lead in the movie, she almost feels like it's a supporting role in that. She's, like, so the straight much man. Yeah, she's kind of the straight man. I mean, she's very lovable and very endearing, and she does it very well. But I wouldn't say, like, the most, like, interesting or, or quirky or odd. I mean, Kate McKinnon's also in it in a funny little role. That was really like good. Um, everybody was – it was a good movie. It was a good yeah. movie. The uh, – what was the name of uh, Simu Liu, who was in that Marvel movie? I, uh, I really love how all of the other <laughs> – uh, leads in that movie have been shitting on Simu Liu since then. Like, everybody apparently fucking hates that guy. Working with him, really? I mean, he's supposed to... I mean, I, I don't want to, like, uh, speak out line, but uh, maybe we could talk about off-air, but he's uh, made comments uh, before that uh, a lot of people have interpreted to be quite, um... Yeah, I, I don't even want to say it on there, just, you know... Okay. I'll tell you off-air, but yeah, he is apparently... Most people do not like him. Oh, interesting. Yeah, there's, like, a video of him and Ryan Gosling about to, like, uh... Um... Uh, like the people are like taking pictures and stuff like that and Simu puts his hand on Ryan Gosling's back and Ryan just looks at him and he's like get off <laughs> and makes him take his hand off of him dude wow yeah. bummer he's good in the movie yeah. <laughs> I mean I don't know he was perfectly good in the movie yeah 
uh, as you know, Ken number six, because all yeah. the guys are Ken. Like Margot just... Robbie also said. Uh, Margot Robbie is also asked who, which um, actor or actress from the movie is most like um, their Ken or Barbie, and she goes, "Oh, Simu Leo." <laughs> Interesting. Uh, yeah. Well, that's not good because he doesn't. I, play I have a heard he's character. he's he's kind of a villain in it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny. So I don't know. I'll let you guys see it. I won't yeah. say anything. Else. I'll tell you. I really think everyone should see Barbie. Yeah. Um. And yeah, see Oppenheimer too. It was it was good. I, yeah, I liked was great. it. Yeah. And Mission Impossible was so fucking good. Dude. Yeah. I'll, oh, I'll watch. I want to see more of those movies, and I'll, I'll I'll end up seeing it at some point at home. Yeah. I I still think maybe Fallout is my favorite uh, Mission Impossible movie. But, dude, the train scene in Dead Reckoning Part 1 is, like, maybe the most goaded Mission Impossible scene yet. Like, I think it's maybe uh, maybe even tops the Burj Khalifa scene from Ghost Protocol. Wow. But uh, it's so fucking good. It ruled. Yeah, me and uh, me, me and uh, our friend, we saw it at 9 a.m. Mm-hmm. Um, and when the movie ended, it was, like, 11.30. And there were a few other people in the theater. Um, I also I want to give a shout-out to our boy in the theater sitting in the same row as us who went by himself and got the biggest bucket of popcorn at 9 a.m. and ate the whole thing while watching the movie. This wicked skinny guy, too. I was like, hell yes, dude. This dude knows how to watch a movie. 9 a.m. start time, don't care. Getting the fucking jumbo popcorn. I mean, what's the difference between a big jug of popcorn and a bunch yeah. of corn pops, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, and he, and he was, like, ingredients. cheering and shit like that during the movie. It was yeah. awesome. I was like, hell he, yeah. He, this went, dude he went to have my... a good fucking time. Yeah, I was like, this dude, this is my guy right here. I love this guy. But uh, yeah, so when we left the movie at 11.30, it was like 90, it was like 100 degrees out at 11.30, totally sunny out, and the theater was packed wall to wall with people in pink. Dude. At 11.30 on the Saturday. So. Speaking of uh, 100 degrees, it's well over 100 degrees yeah. in this room right now. Oh, so. uh, yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll call it. Whoa. Um, and it's also lightning. That just shook my whole house. Damn. I heard that. That's still shaking my house. <laughs> I can't wait for it to come down here. Um, oh, uh, also, uh, one other quick thing. When we left Oppenheimer and you got, like, stuck on the highway, right? Yeah. Oh, dude, one of the scariest was, drives I've ever taken. There was a Red Sox game going on, and the concourse flooded, and there was a video of a guy who was, like, jumping into the water and, like, sliding on it. I was like, dude, there was so much piss and shit in that. Yeah. Disgusting. <laughs> yeah. Um, All right, anyway, 90, um, 93 North, uh, I was in water up to my, up to, almost up to my tailpipe uh, for oh a good chunk God. of that drive home. That was, That's that was awful. Spooky. Flash floods. So. Yeah. Everybody yeah, be safe flash out there tonight, in the Boston so. area because it looks like more flash flood warnings tonight. So Yeah, we basically got no rain April and May, and we're just getting dumped on constantly now. But yeah. like it's, it's so, yeah. This has been one of the hottest and wettest Julys yeah. on record. It's bizarre. oh, just scorching hot thunderstorms. It's like every other day, it's incredibly hot, and then it's it, it just pours it like tropical rain. It's insane. Yeah, ninety degrees with like monsoon rain. At, feels like, like I'm back in Nicaragua. Uh, like wa- I'm serious. Yeah, it's, feels like I'm in Florida. Oh, roof. dude, yeah. My my uncle and um his partner just came up to visit, and we were with him on Saturday, and he was like, dude, it is a hundred five degrees with thunderstorms every single day. In Florida, just scorching hot thunderstorms, hundred five. Because like I don't know if people know this, Florida generally like on the coast generally doesn't get even really into the nineties too much. It's just so humid, yeah, that it like feels like it is. But he's like, oh yeah, it's like ninety five, a hundred, hundred plus every single day with fucking thunderstorms. But the climate's not changing. We'll be fine. Yeah, that's cool. Well, anyway, how come it um, still snows in the winter, bub? Well, how come it's fucking cold here? Yeah. It's cold here. Yeah, I'm in the Southern Hemisphere and it's winter, but it's still cold. <laughs> um, uh, anyhow. Yeah. Thank you all so, so much for joining us again. Uh, and I just checked the numbers. Uh, for uh, The last episode we did was Mongols 4, right? And I'm, I'm oh. about halfway done writing Mongols 5, so we'll have that up shortly. It won't be as many episodes between 4 and, and 5. But um, a long episode. That was two hours long after edits and putting in music and stuff. And it got way more downloads in the first week than the last two installments so thank you guys that's yep cool thanks for listening. i was you know anytime we release a long one it's like you know so, who knows yeah so, sometimes they do well sometimes they fucking bomb yeah i was I, I i wasn't sure this one would do exceptionally well but i put a lot of work into it so i appreciate yep. you guys listening yep. and i appreciate evan toughing it out because uh two hours is a long time when you're not the one presenting something that you wrote and care about you know it's it's a long time to be an audience so uh this this <laughs> week's uh swan of the week is uh my co-host oh, thank you. 
it's fun, some kind of nice little music here. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, have a yeah. good week. Uh, tell your friends about us. We'll be back next week. I know Evan's got Great something he's working on. Yeah. Uh, I've got some. I, it'll either be mine or his, depending on who's done first. So yep. um, we'll have a, a written episode next week for you. And uh, be good. Thanks for listening. Uh, stay in the AC if you can. Stay cool. Yeah, please, because it's no joke. Yep. All right, peace. Bye. Day in, day out.